The Beast from the Middle East, Athira are fierce fighting gymnasts named after a herbivore. Don't let the docile name trick you, these ladies are anything but prey. Before I go any further, I need to point out that Afira is indeed not a night hero, but an outlander. I found this clearly rushed article with false information and, since I was already doing the Arabian Nights pun, took it one step further and cleverly edited this so you would barely notice where her actual portrait is. Anyways, here's how to gazelle. Edit 2. I was hard at work on this video when suddenly... So there's some changes to Afira coming already. I'm still uploading this video now because I don't want to wait a week, but I'll reference these changes in the video. If you want to see what's changed when the patch goes live, I'm taking a shot in the dark that Freeze will have a video on it, so go check him out. Afira's two hit chains are deceptively simple. Opener and finisher lights both say no you, and all her heavy attacks are built different. Opener heavies vary in their speed and damage, while finisher heavies all have different powers. Both the right and top heavies deal more damage than the left heavy because of its potential for massive damage. More on that later. You can also use a zone, dodge, dash, or sprint heavy to start a chain. After any opener or finisher, you can use your Darkwood Grain Ring to cartwheel. After the cartwheel, you are reset to neutral. Afira has four bashes. The one you'll probably use the most is the neutral bash. On top of a Superman shield punch just being awesome, this bash can be used to chase someone down to the ends of the earth. You think I'm joking? We tested it. Interestingly, you can run faster when you pick up Sonic's shoes. You can faint this bash or the sprint, and even flip out of the sprint. Your reward for landing a bash? Your finisher heavy comes out much faster, guaranteeing damage against the person you just assaulted, or making it easier to take a swing at someone else. You can also cartwheel after these finishers, or even after the bashes. Basically, your job when playing Afira is to kick and punch people in the face, and use your no you lights or undodgeable heavy to catch players thinking you'll do just that. In team modes, your hitboxes aren't the greatest, but you're decent at evading and repositioning yourself with the cartwheels. For Afira's max punishes, off a heavy parry you get a light attack, and off a light parry you get a top heavy, while guard breaks get you a left heavy. On wall splats, you get a top heavy. Knockdown parries get you right heavy into strong heavy, while knockdown throw punishes depend on your guard direction. If your guard is to the right, you can get the exact same punish. If your guard is to the left, you can only get that punish after a backwards throw. Otherwise, dash forward heavy into strong heavy. Finally, from top guard, you can back throw and top heavy into one of your strong heavies. Now for Afira's real max punishes. Since she can get a shield bash off a heavy parry, you can get a finisher heavy. And if there just so happens to be a wall or environmental hazard to your right, congratulations, you just removed your opponent's ability to have fun at least for a week because they're somehow going to be patching it. I'm glad this obnoxious wombo combo is being fixed, but I don't know how they're going to do it just yet. I did find what I think was a pretty good solution by user DDMJunior22 on the competitive subreddit, which is keeping this dagger but nerfing the damage of the heavy. This way you still get rewarded with more damage on a wall splat than either of the other two heavies after a bash, but looping the wall splat won't kill someone, because as you've seen in the background while I'm rambling on about this, the damage is determined by how much gas you have in the tank. But if the stars aligned, in revenge, you could 100-0 a Shigoki with Tough as Nails. So yeah, glad it's getting fixed. I'd love to say I'm done with punishes and moving on to fashion, but Afira is For Honor's new Dommy Mommy. We ain't done yet. Afira can use either her tier 1 or tier 3 after a parry. Both deal direct damage, and have the ability to force your opponent to skydive without a parachute. If you've got both online, lead with the tier 1 for 20 damage, and immediately follow this up with your tier 3, which cannot be dodged. With the guaranteed heavy, this gets you up to 68 damage total off a heavy parry. At this point, a fellow dominatrix can do the exact same thing for 136 damage total. Is it optimal to use 4 feats for this much damage? Probably not. Is it funny? 
If I'm the one doing it, of course. As for Ophira's fashion, I think it's fantastic for an Arabian warrior and it's really well done. You can check out my Arabian Nights video for more footage, opinions, and rants, but I'll quickly summarize the only thing I dislike about her armor. Alternate sets not letting me use my paint patterns and material is not cool. It wasn't an issue with past hero alternate sets, why is it immeasurably complex now? Anyways, the gear perks she can get are a mix of offensive and assist perks. I think that endurance is going to be pretty handy considering how easily she gets tired, and headhunter is never a bad choice. And headhunter is never a bad choice. I think that endurance is going to be pretty handy considering how easily she gets tired, and headhunter is never a bad choice, especially with how easy she can get executions. Between devourer and remedy, it's kind of a no-brainer that remedy is better. As for Afira's feats, we've got Gravity's Pull, Body Count, and Tireless in Tier 1, Fortune's Favor, Executioner's Respite, and Thrilling Comeback in Tier 2, Speeding Comet, Tough as Nails, and Heal on Block in Tier 3, and Captain Arabia's Mighty Shield, Regenerate, and Stalwart Banner in Tier 4. Of these, her first three unique feats are her best choices in my eyes. Gravity's Pull is quick and has a very fast cooldown. Fortune's Favor doesn't just activate on melee attacks like I originally thought, but straight up any attack that lands. And for a tier 3, Speeding Comet is just nuts. The feat works like Afira's neutral bash and chases targets, but has a full guard when chasing and up until the attack connects. A finisher heavy is even guaranteed after, but left heavies won't stagger. You can even feint or cartwheel out of the run. As for her tier 4, Orbiting Shield is Pirate's tier 3 bouncing bullets with a defense debuff from her tier 1. And while the damage debuff is nice, I don't think that this is strong enough as a tier 4 feat, especially since you can hit allies or even yourself with the bounces. In my opinion, Stalwart Banner is a better option, even if Orbiting Shield is more fun. They're supposedly buffing it next week though, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. If you want a more detailed breakdown on her unique feats, Freeze just released a video going over them and it's really useful. Afira strikes a fear into the hearts of any who oppose them, and now are technically the fastest heroes in For Honor. She's a lot of fun and honestly is my favorite Outlander so far. If you're looking for a rushdown hero who's agile and quick, try Afira. If you're looking for more info, the For Honor Information Hub has all the information on Afira like attack timings, damage, easy to reference max punishes, and much more. It's linked down below. Thank you for watching. What do you think of Afira? Let me know down in the comments below. Huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, especially Shadow and Josh. Have a good one, and I'll see you on the next video.